Megan, thanks for joining us. I want to play devil's advocate here for a minute. It does seem like this kind of opens up the walled garden in a way that we've never seen Apple do before, right? You know, thanks so much for having me, Julia. I, I have to disagree. I, this is this is really a sham settlement offer. It does nothing, as you mentioned, to um, really address the root causes of the problems that developers, large and small, continue to face as part of the Apple's App Store. Um, but what do you think is being overlooked here? What is the piece that you think would really make a difference? Is it about allowing developers to communicate m more directly with their users within their apps and say, hey, click here and pay, <laughs> pay and avoid the Apple App Store fees? I mean, what is the issue? Is it about avoiding those App Store fees entirely? Because that seems unlikely. I think there are a few different root issues here. One, um, which you pointed out, this does nothing, um, you know, allowing developers to communicate with their customers about lower prices outside of their app is quite frankly not a concession and further highlights Apple's total control over the app marketplace. So that's that's one issue. The other issue is it does nothing to address the in-app um, the requirement to use Apple's in-app payment processing system. Um, and then third, as you did mention, it, it really does nothing to address the uh, exorbitant ta app, app tax that um, folks continue to pay when they're using apps that make their lives better on a daily ba basis. Megan, I'm with you here. It's your draft. Uh, I don't really see this as much of a concession at all. It doesn't do anything to reduce that friction. However, could this be a first step as we're seeing so much scrutiny and there are more lawsuits? You have, you know, some very big companies like Epic coming out against Apple. Does this at least give them some ammunition in their fight? You know, I, I think that this is really, it's hard to see the substance behind this, Deirdre. I mean, I think it's, as I, I keep referring to it, it truly is a sham. It's, you know, Apple um, using this as a PR stunt and not really, quite frankly, focused on the solutions. You know, I think we're seeing important movement worldwide. You know, uh, there is um, bipartisan bicameral legislation that's introduced, has been introduced in Congress by Senators Blumenthal, Blackburn, Klobuchar, and then in the House by Representatives Johnson, Buck, and Cicilline. And I think those are important steps. We're also seeing movement worldwide. If you've been following in South Korea, um, they are poised to consider an important um, bill that would address in-app payment, the requirement, requirement of in-app payment processing systems on Monday, South Korea time. So I do think that this is you know, very much indicative of Apple feeling the pressure. But like everything else, it's, it's truly um, a part of their gatekeeper role to um, really control the rules of the road going forward. Megan, I wonder what you make of this uh, fund for small developers uh, of $100 million, which doesn't sound like a lot of money for Apple. What do you think would have been serious money for Apple? I mean, that's a drop in the bucket when you're talking about a company like Apple. And quite frankly, the legal fees are coming out of that $100 million. So, you know, at the end of the day, that's really not a whole lot of money. Developers are poised to get, what, a $250 check. That does nothing to, you know, encourage innovation and business growth uh, generally.